Sweden's new DIY drone killer, Loki, would be perfect for Ukraine. In a blistering 84 days, yes, less than the runtime of a Marvel DC franchise feud, Swedish defense contractor Saab, in coordination with the Swedish Air Force, built and tested a mobile counter UAS system using little more than off-the-shelf components, extension cords, and sheer Scandinavian audacity. Hey friends, Wes here. This is an amazing story, but first, I want to thank Incogni for sponsoring this video and keeping this channel healthy. Stay tuned for more on Incogni here in a little bit. So what's this about Saab's new Frankenstein's monster of modern warfare? Well, meet Loki, a counter UAS system that looks like it was uh, assembled in a garage but hits with the precision of a Swiss watch. Let's get one thing out of the way. Loki wasn't built to be pretty. There was no elegant design phase, no expensive product lifecycle roadmap. Saab's engineers were given a challenge. Make a fully functional mobile counter UAS system using existing tech. And they sprinted like their funding depended on it. The Loki project didn't start with a glossy PowerPoint presentation or a year-long feasibility study. There were no meticulously color-coded Gantt charts or billion euro R&D budgets. What it did start with, though, was a challenge posed bluntly and unceremoniously by Sweden's top brass. How fast can we field a working counter drone system using what we already have? Saab's answer? Give us 84 days and a wooden pallet. From the outset, the mission wasn't to engineer a next-gen weapon from scratch, but to MacGyver a working prototype from commercial and military gear that was already sitting on the shelves. And if this sounds like defense innovation by way of IKEA, well, that's because it kind of was. The approach was modular, pragmatic, and unapologetically utilitarian. Less Lockheed Skunk Works and more tactical Home Depot. And it worked. Rather than funneling millions into custom components or perfecting ruggedized housing, Saab and its military partners took an off-the-shelf radar, a naval-grade gun platform, a few nondescript antenna systems, and cobbled them all together into a fully integrated drone kill chain in under three months. At one point, someone literally strapped a 150-kilogram radar to a wooden pallet with bungee cords. And no, that wasn't a placeholder. They ran live tests that way. This wasn't just improvisation. It was an intentional stress test of Sweden's defense industrial agility. Could a tier one defense firm like Saab deliver operational capability faster than bureaucracy could say procurement cycle? Could engineers, airmen, and war planners ditch the luxury of time and still produce something battlefield ready? Apparently, Yes. The result is Loki, a name borrowed from Norse mythology's god of mischief, which feels oddly appropriate for a system that's essentially punked the traditional military acquisition process. By the way, Loki is also my dog's name. High five. All right. Saab leaned heavily on a design principle usually reserved for Silicon Valley startups, minimum viable product. Every component had to earn its place. Every wire, every radar, and every round of ammunition had to contribute directly to one thing, neutralizing hostile drones at a fraction of the time and cost of traditional solutions. While some nations are still debating drone taxonomy and committee meetings, Sweden just built a working prototype, tested it, scored dozens of kills on live targets, and is already planning battlefield deployment by 2025. It's not that the system cuts corners, it just doesn't wait around for the corners to be installed. Loki's origin isn't just a case study in speed, it's a warning shot across the bow of every bloated, risk-averse procurement office from Washington to Brussels. Adapt or fall behind. Now, before we move on, I want to take a second and talk about something a little less kinetic, but just as important, your personal data. When I was researching this piece, I spent a lot of time digging through defense tech reports, LinkedIn profiles, and even some obscure procurement PDFs that probably haven't seen daylight since 2015. And in doing that, I got a nasty reminder of just how exposed we all are online. 
I started getting weird spam emails referencing defense systems I had just Googled. And I'm not saying the bots are watching, but the bots are watching. That's where today's sponsor, Incogni, comes in. Incogni is like the Loki system for your digital life. It finds and removes your personal data from the sketchy data broker websites that harvest your info without asking. You know, the ones that sell your email, home address, or even political preferences, yikes, to advertisers, identity thieves, or people who make robocalls during dinner. I ran Incogni a couple of weeks ago and it found my name on over 90 data broker sites. Some had shockingly detailed info, stuff like past addresses, family members, and purchase history. And you do not want to see my purchase history. Incogni sent official removal requests on my behalf and within days, a bunch of those profiles vanished. Poof. Gone. No wooden pallets required. Incogni doesn't just file the paperwork, they fight for your privacy. Like Sweden fights drones. Fast, effective, and with zero patience for unnecessary red tape. If you care about keeping your personal data out of the hands of the wrong people, especially in an era of hacks, leaks, and surveillance, you need to give Incogni a shot. Click on the link in the description below and use code Wes O'Donnell at the link and get 60% off an annual plan. That's incogni.com slash Wes O'Donnell. And there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so it's completely risk-free. Thanks, Incogni, for sponsoring this video. All right, back to Sweden's do-it-yourself counter drone system. What Saab has done with Loki is pretty amazing, but how does it actually see drones? Well, for drone detection, Loki employs the Giraffe 1X radar, a 150-kilogram radar system with a range of about 75 kilometers but a more practical detection range of about four kilometers for tiny quadcopters cluttering modern battlefields. The radar was literally ratchet strapped to a pallet. Power? Well, it was delivered via an orange extension cord snaking across a military grade generator like it was borrowed from someone's garage. Next to the radar, an unpainted red container bristling with mystery antennas. Now Saab has stayed silent on what's inside, but logic suggests it's doing a mix of electronic reconnaissance, jamming, or secure comms, and no, they didn't bother painting it. Time was of the essence, and aesthetics didn't make the kill chain. Despite the makeshift look, the system logged 36 quadcopters and 17 fixed-wing UAVs eliminated during the trials. Not bad for something that looks like it was assembled in a backyard during a blackout. But that's not all. They also have a weapons truck. This is where naval guns go off-road. Once a drone is spotted, Loki's engagement vehicle steps in with the track fire remote weapon station, gear typically reserved for the Swedish Navy's Combat Boat 90. Saab didn't redesign the gun platform, they just dropped it on a truck and let it rip. Track fire comes armed with a 7.62 FN mag, a 12.7 mm M2 Browning, digital fire control, day and night vision, laser range finders, and automatic target tracking that doesn't blink. This setup doesn't try to down $1,000 drones with million dollar missiles. That's the point. Loki is economically sane. Machine guns for cheap drones, not AMRAMs. It's a big win in the cost per kill arms race. The real innovation really is speed over standards. Loki isn't just a new toy for Sweden's military. It's a paradigm shift in how defense systems are built quickly, collaboratively, and with a deep disregard for bureaucratic drag. This isn't a system that ticks every NATO compliance box. Then again, Sweden only officially joined NATO on March 7th, 2024. They're not bound by the same doctrinal inertia yet. Saab, to its credit, seems to have taken full advantage of that gray zone, prioritizing speed and flexibility over regulations and aesthetics. In the US, counter UAS development has followed the usual script. Identify a problem, throw 10 contractors at it and 10 years into it, and then field a 30,000 pound truck that jams Wi-Fi and sometimes explodes things. Systems like MLIDs are powerful, no doubt. They combine radar, optics, electronic warfare, and even kinetic guns, but they're also pricey, complex to operate, and harder to scale in large numbers. Loki sits somewhere in the sweet spot, 
It's more than a jamming rifle like the Drone Buster, but far more agile and cost-effective than a full Imlid system. So let's dispense with any romantic notions of air superiority as we once knew it. The future of warfare isn't F-35s carving up the sky or hypersonic missiles screaming toward hardened targets. What it is, is a $300 quadcopter flying 20 feet off the ground, dropping a grenade into the open hatch of a multi-million dollar tank. It's insurgents with Amazon Prime accounts fielding real-time ISR and kinetic effects with store-bought hardware. This is the new normal, and it's terrifyingly asymmetric. As drone technology becomes more autonomous, harder to detect, and more accessible to state and non-state actors alike, countries can't afford to sit on their hands waiting for perfect. They need good enough right now. Saab and the Swedish Air Force understood this. That's why Loki matters, not because it's sexy, but because it's fast, it works, and it closes the kill chain on today's most disruptive aerial threats. And if other militaries don't get their act together, Sweden may soon find itself in the unusual position of exporting the future of air defense. The success of Loki wasn't just technical, it was a culture shift. It showcased what happens when military leadership gives engineers a mission and then gets out of the way. The plan is to field Loki in operational units by late 2025. That's light speed in defense circles. And Saab isn't done. The system is scalable and upgradable. Add more radars? Sure. Plug in electronic warfare modules? No problem. Mount bigger guns or non-kinetic effectors? Absolutely. It's counter UAS sandbox for modern militaries. And Sweden, well, Sweden just built the first sandcastle. Loki isn't pretty. It's not even particularly elegant, but it doesn't need to be. What Saab built in 84 days is a living, firing example of what defense innovation looks like when you kill the red tape and let engineers engineer. And that, folks, is an innovation worth strapping to a pallet. Okay, friends, that's it for today. Special thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this video and keeping this channel healthy. Please subscribe if you're feeling froggy. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.